I think it's important that the people who aren't young and aren't these super strong <laughs> athletes are a little visible because you can you can do really hard things even if you're older and not the strongest swimmer and probably not the fastest runner either. Um, so I guess it was Im- important to me that people know that more average athletes, you can do this. Welcome to the Low Tide Boys, a swim on podcast. I'm Chip. And I'm Chris. And this is episode 215 of the show. We have a truly awesome show for everyone this week. Joining us to share their Utala story is Anna and Ben, a.k.a. Team The Calamanders. Their unique journey to and at 2023 Utala Summer World Championship is as inspiring as it was awesome. We totally love this conversation and know that you will too. And I mean, it took me right back. It really did. And uh, I think this episode really, for me, highlights what, we really love about the partner aspect of the sport and what we try mm-hmm. to kind of feature in Partners Month. There's there's every ends of the spectrum, young and old, big and small, whatever it is. Like there's everyone that that can make a uh, swim run in a magical experience, and I think the Calamanders really highlighted that uh, very well. So we're we're more than thrilled to to share this episode uh, in Partners Month uh, here with you. So we got some work travel. We can't give you the full intro, so we're 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 breezing breezing through this one this week. But regardless, great conversation uh, with Anna and Ben. There, let's get right into it with the Calamanders. All right, so continuing with Partners Month, we have the team, the Calamanders. Ben and Anna, welcome so much to the show. How are you guys doing? Great. Thanks for having us. No, thanks Great. Thanks for coming on. You know, we, uh, since the World Championship, we've been recording some of these stories that we're calling Atala stories, and you guys have a hell of an Atala story. And I think, <laughs> you know, coming right on the heels of Swimmer and Christmas and people basically figuring out that they have a lot, a lot of time to contemplate and train for this journey, um, you guys took a little bit of a different route, so why don't we talk about uh, you know how that all happened? Yeah, go ahead, there, Anna. <laughs> well, we weren't we weren't chasing points or trying to go to worlds at all. We just had a blast in 2022 and did as many races as we could. Then, to our surprise, in January of 2023 we got a message from Lars of Odyssey saying, hey, we are giving entries to world championships for the men's, women's, and mixed teams that had the most points last season. And you and Ben had the most points. Do you want to go to Worlds? (laughs) Which totally blindsided us because I don't think we ever even looked at such a thing. Well, I don't think they posted it, but we never even thought yeah that that was a thing so it was not yeah, on our to radar. say blindsided to say blindsided yeah that's okay it wasn't totally, totally right it wasn't you you didn't hammer it out and it wasn't in your two-year vision plan of <laughs> what are the calamanders gonna do we're gonna take on a tala in, in 2023 that wasn't no, all no, up no, to this no. Yeah. okay no I, I believe we maybe had mentioned it that maybe someday we'd like to try it and see if we could go mm-hmm. yeah but that was very basic. I mean, and it was in the future. Yeah, yeah, very much. So, how long? How long did you two deliberate before saying, "You know what, Lars? Why not?" I think we had a week. Oh wow! He okay, <laughs> he, he wanted to know in a week. Yeah. So there's a deadline. Okay, <laughs> that's yeah. probably smart on his part. Yeah. We were pretty undecided, and I told my wife Kimberly, and her response immediately was. You've got to go. You have like to go. That. How can you not go? Yeah. She's like, I and would I love will... a vacation to, to Sweden. <laughs> yeah. I will say, <laughs> when we were going to the Mackinac race before this in 2022, we were in the car driving up to Mackinac. And I said, hey, what races should we put on our calendar for 2024? And Kim says, 
world. I want you guys to do worlds. <laughs> I was there. Um, yeah, <laughs> it's true. It happened. There, there it was. So, so it's yeah. So you have a week to decide. Obviously, you decide in the affirmative. Um, there's a lot of people in your shoes right now. <laughs> in that this race is looming. It's not easy. Uh, we'll, we'll we'll talk about how not easy it is later. But um, but but how did you guys sort of psych yourselves up and I guess realign your year to to really make this your A race? We didn't have much of a year planned. I mean, we had nothing planned at that point. So fair enough. Basically, everything revolved was set to revolve around that. So okay. So it forced it forced itself onto your calendar, and then everything else it, kind of fell into place. It sounds like it, it, absolutely, yeah. Okay. That's how it happens I mean, sometimes. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. We had a lot to do to be ready for worlds. Um, so the first thing we did was sign up with Envol, with mm, Nico. Yeah. Smart. Which was amazing. And um, I felt like physically, obviously with the training, it was really helpful, but it was also extremely helpful mentally to to know somebody else is managing what I'm supposed to do this mm. week. And I went yeah. really week by week. Yeah, and yeah. I did, we trained, I don't think we ever trained even I can't think of one session that we weren't together. Yeah. Which is atypical, I think. Wow. For yeah. Yeah, so, definitely. You know, uh, so I did whatever she did, I did. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I did every single thing Nico told me to do. That, so that's a pretty I smart. I guess I did too. And Ben, <laughs> Envol by Osmosis. I, that was a good, <laughs> that's a good plan as well. Yeah. yeah. Um, that must have really helped. And it, and I love how you all were just, you're going out there, you're doing, you're having fun at these races and you're just going out and doing as many as you can because you're having such a great time. Um, and it must have been really helpful. I mean, knowing, you know, uh, having done Utsala ourselves, like knowing what the day lays out for you, having that strong, like foundation of like, hey, Anna and Ben, you two, you've been doing the workouts, every workout, side by side, step by step, stroke by stroke. And you know that you can you can get through hard things together. Like I'm sure that really played and, and helped fuel you through through the through the day to come. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh I mean, <laughs> I, mean I think she relied on me, but I relied on her just as much. So I mean it was it was definitely a, a team effort. Sure. Not just the race, but you know the whatever it was six months leading up to it. So yeah, yeah. There was what was some? Did you have any sort of like big cornerstone workouts that you kind of was a really good big confidence booster for you all in the, in sort of the build up to to the race in September? I'm thinking Ben of we did a six hour swim run in Lake Michigan. Gotta do it. <laughs> We didn't feel great after. Yeah. <laughs> it was really I don't think that gave me confidence, but uh, we did. We did do it. No, it, it's there's some big waves. We're, I mean, we're we live in the Midwest. I mean, yeah, we yeah. Lake, we do have Lake Michigan, which is can be sort of ocean like, you know, as far as water conditions. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I think I was immediately like on the first swim. I think I was seasick, for, you know, just from the waves, and I'm just right. like. So that wasn't a real confidence boost for me. Uh, it, you know, and that that is typical for me. I get seasick, so that I I always worry about that when I swim. So, do you wear earplugs? Incidentally, I, I do not. You should try that. I've heard that. Yeah, Somewhat, just, somebody else has mentioned that. To just me. yeah. put just putting it out there. Give it a shot. It <laughs> might help. Um, you know, so so I, I think I think it bears repeating. For anyone who's listening, who's maybe doing the world champs for the first time and feeling pretty overwhelmed, I know Chipper, you and I were like <laughs> besides ourselves with overwhelm. Is you know we live in the good time for swim run. There's a lot of coaches. Obviously, Team Envol is leading the way. I mean, they know how to prepare people for this event. This is a difficult event. So if you have any fears, don't know if you're going to sign up. All this stuff, like get a coach because there are resources out there more than there obviously more than there used to be. Um, for, for you to, um, you know, get the help you need to be prepared for this day, because it is an awesome day, but it's, it's not easy. 
Um, I'm curious, um, Anna and Ben, so, you know, as the year went on, I know, Anna, you you guys were going to, you two were doing Casco together. That fell through, so you did this uh, triple triple team thing. So I'd love to hear kind of like, obviously, that was a plan B situation. Uh, <laughs> just just kind of like how that race went and, and how you guys kept kind of working your way through through the year. So I did um, a trio, I guess, with Amy and Trista of the Adorkables. Um, and I think most people know Casco didn't really go yeah. as planned. Um, I still had a great day because I, my goals were to work on nutrition because I was trying to um, follow Amy and Trista's lead since they're really good at nutrition. And Ben and I... <laughs> I guess we're really good at depletion training. Like we would yeah. not so good. very little. Oh, fuel. you know what? I remember this now. You guys wouldn't do any gels. Well, we might like. You're not. We're not. I'm not opposed to them. We just. <laughs> <laughs> we just don't. It's eat not a, a slice lot of, of pizza. I get it. I get it. Ben. <laughs> Part of that is we're not going. I mean, we're not going that hard. You know, we're going. We're just not. We're not going at our top rate. You know. And, we're just trying to finish, right? We're trying to have fun. Yeah. We're trying to get to the finish line. So, well, I'm glad Trista and Amy gave you guys a talking to because, you know, anything <laughs> well, yeah, that's going to take once. you more than 12 yeah. hours or something. They well, did. They did. They really helped us get the nutrition on uh, ready. Nice. And um, at Casco, mainly it was just really fun running around and swimming with them. And I felt like we were taking gels constantly but i guess it was actually only every 45 minutes <laughs> <laughs> it it does feel i i totally get it because if you're you know uh, there's different nutrition philosophies obviously but like you know we're trying to hit a 60 to 90 grams of carbs per hour but it really is you have to be diligent on it and it's like you feel like it's just you're just jamming them down your throat all day long and i i totally get it uh it's just it's a tough thing to really get used to. And that's why it is so important to, to, to work on that throughout the year and in these races. And I love how that was your, your focus of the race. If it's not, Hey, it's not time-based, but it's like, Oh, we want to work on these few things. And nutrition is, is a really key one because yeah, if you don't have any gas in the tank for however many hours it's going to take you, you're going to have a really, uh, really bad time out there. Yeah. I mean, this was twice as long as uh, anything we, so, yeah. you know, I mean, twice as long as a training day. So, mm -hmm. you know, it, it's hard because <laughs> yeah. nothing simulates it. Like the, it's the race. Nothing simulates it. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. Especially in the States. I mean, just like terrain wise. Um, I mean, we've talked about that a ton on the show. It's like Casco gives you like a flavor for it basically because you're going from island to island. And yes, maybe um, <laughs> Vail Island is, is the closest thing. Just think a slippery veil. Yeah. Right? Said, no. And she's shaking her head no. <laughs> <laughs> no, that did not. I was not ready for the training. <laughs> You're not ready. Okay, take it back. Take it back. Um so so yeah, I mean, you guys get to Sweden. Let's get let's get a race report. Let's get a, you know, a systems check. How are you guys feeling when you get there? I know we saw you guys uh, earlier in the week when you arrived. Um mm -hmm. It's a pressure cooker for sure, but how are spirits? Very. How are you guys doing? Very nervous. Yeah. Mm. Anx anxiety ridden. I yeah. Yeah. Say. That's accurate. Been there. I don't, I, th <laughs> I think um, that we both were really confident we could finish the course. Mm -hmm. We were not confident at all that we could finish it in the allotted time. Mm. Okay. Um, yeah. We yeah. aren't super strong swimmers. Um, and I think that was really, it was a concern for me going into it and i don't i can't think of another time i've done something where i really wasn't sure i'd be able to finish it yeah our concern was just not meeting the, each of those cutoffs along mm -hmm. the way and the swimming being the reason we, we wouldn't yeah and you know i first of all like commend you all on it takes a, a certain bit of bravery to to start and to to tow the start line on something that you're not a hundred percent sure you're going to be able to like make it to the end. Yeah. Uh, and so, mm -hmm. so like kudos on that, like that takes a, that takes a certain amount of gumption right there. <laughs> um, and then the swim, of course they start you off at the easiest swim, just a, a casual mile, uh, <laughs> through some open water, uh, chop there. Yeah. But, 
Um, you know, typically yeah, it's not it's not supposed to be like it was. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. no, no, no. It was way different this past year than it was uh, two years ago, for sure, for sure. So you're you're sort of in the in the start corral. I, it's uh, it's impossible not to have the like the energy sort of fill you fill you all up how how was how was it obviously probably a peak anxiety uh on in the star corral but were you also was there that bit of excitement on on sort of what the day was going to unfold for y'all yeah there was yes for me there and, was yeah and um we both just love swim run so as i think as yeah. nervous as we were we felt like we were where we were supposed to be yeah that's great you know what yeah. i mean i t- to, to me that resonates so much because it's true like if you love the sport if you think it's super fun you guys obviously do You've drank the kool-aid just as much as we have right um oh, yeah. like why would you not want to do the original course you know on like the oh. holy land of swim oh, right? yes. it's like it's like the track to mecca or something it's yeah. like it's such a cool thing you're doing it at the birthplace of the sport like yes it's super hard and yes there's you know danger danger of foot everywhere and jellyfish. but yeah jellyfish too um <laughs> but yeah i mean just just to, to, to get the chance to do it has to be has to be pretty cool wait it's nobody amazing. ever told me about the jellyfish was that a thing there because there was it was this year yeah no jellyfish are a thing but they're not the kind that, that sting they don't you sting you but they, they do yeah, thank god it is unsettling sometimes I, it was because i'd never heard hey don't worry about the jellyfish or anything about jellyfish yeah but they were everywhere we talked. Who did we talk to that actually has like a jellyfish? Or it's Gordo. Gordo or Burn. He actually has an allergic reaction to jellyfish. And the first time he did this race, he didn't know about the jellyfish as well. And he started seeing them. And he actually had like some. Really, he had to go to the hospital because he got stung by one. And Whoa. he's all of a sudden swimming, and they're all around he had him. To get like an epipen. Or so something. I mean, we need a. I guess we need their jellyfish until uh, bumper stickers. Wow, big big <clears throat> lack in our programming. Not okay. to call out the. Jellyfish. We'll increase the jellyfish <laughs> programming this year for anyone racing until Yeah. Honestly, the jellyfish were the least of our worries. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it was out. fine with them. <laughs> Turns out it was fine. Yeah. I do want to just add two things pre-race. Yeah. yeah. One is. There's all these athletes who they may not even know there's time cutoffs. And then there's us who <laughs> we're really worried about the time cutoffs. So on our paddles, we kind of did backwards math and we wrote what time we should be nice. um, getting in and out of the swims before the cutoff. Um, Smart. Yeah, I, I, think I had other, the swims. I had all yeah. the swims and you had all the runs. And that's yeah. how we kept track of it. Because we knew if we had all, if we each had them all, it's too we'll much. Yeah. I like you need that. three paddles. Really. Yeah. <laughs> it's like the nuclear codes. You know, you need two keys to go yeah. in to so like turn and press the button. So you yeah. go three, three two, one, one the turn. Sport. Yeah. And then the other Smart. thing is we got to Sweden on Wednesday and I can't remember what day, but we went out with Nico and Enval and Marcus and Beek in particular. <laughs> Maybe they were a little worried about us. They should have been if they weren't. But they took us aside and did some very intense transition practice. Yeah, nice. That was incredibly helpful. And I think yes. really paid off and made all the difference for us during the actual race because our getting in and out of the water got so much quicker after we worked with them. Yeah. yeah. You know, I mean, well, obviously, shout out Marcus, Marcus and Beak. Those guys are awesome, great ambassadors of the sport. And you know, no, no one's, no one's happier to try to help you guys than than, than those two, right? <laughs> That's yeah, um, absolutely. You know, we we had a similar experience when we went there in 2022, where uh, Envo invited us. They were doing some like a swim run practice, which was interesting. It was like a track workout, but it was a swim run practice, which we'd never done with like a coach there. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was pretty like, do cool this, do there. And yeah, it was all about transitions and. I think if I can speak for Chipper, like we both found it just like so helpful. Just be like, okay, so this is what, this is what it's going to be like. And just like try it a couple times, like practice your footing and all that stuff. So yeah, I mean, I, I can see why that would bring the temperature down a little bit on the anxiety yeah. for and sure. It, yeah. It's not the first time. Yeah. That first transition is not the first time you're trying to like, you know, slide up on one of those rocks, like a seal and, you know, <laughs> yep. trying to like wiggle your way out of it, which <laughs> right. is what it kind of feels like sometimes. Like the whole but... running down the rocks into the water. And like, there, we don't have anything like that. Yeah. Like, it's a beach here. There's, you know, so, I mean, conceptually you can think about that, but until you're there, you know, and do it. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I don't know if we would have done that on race day. Right. 
Absolutely. And and yeah, what so the Envol community definitely sound like it, it came through as really good supporting from a, a lot of different angles uh, mm-hmm. for you all to to help out there. But um, yes, uh, yeah, and it, great to see such a, a strong U.S. contingent uh, as well as usual. It's always great. We got the team photo in front of from the flag on um, there were I forgot where whatever that hotel Dejan is Dejan Hanset yeah. or something yeah the Hans yeah that one the good it was a nice hotel of course um, <laughs> lovely so yeah US uh, folks there and then you know try to get a good night's sleep pretty much an impossibility I think <laughs> yeah yeah no, no. not yeah. possible yeah yeah yeah, it's uh two years in a row, crappy sleep. Uh, but I can verify that Chipper was sleeping because he started snoring, and it's probably the only instance where I'm like, thank God, at least he's at least that means he's sleeping. Yeah. At least one of us is is getting some. Then I felt a pillow stifle my face, and I wasn't exactly <laughs> sure. Then I was like, oh wait, it's a team sport. Yeah, I, need I knew I wasn't gonna sleep, so I, I wasn't bothered by that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, just knew, I knew that going in, so. So, so what, let's, let's go, let's go through the race guys. So the race, you know, you line up, (laughs) you know, Island, remember the names and everything. Uh, you know, obviously we don't need to do every Island. We could do like, like broad strokes, but, but definitely the beginning, the start, you guys are in the corral, you know, what's going to happen. You're going to follow the quad. You're going to go to the beach and, you know, do the thing. How did the race start and unfold for you guys? Well, well, like all races for me, and I think for most people, as soon as you start, the, the anxiety is gone. Mm-hmm. So, of course, I was just waiting to get underway. You know, you're mm-hmm. standing around, you, you're on the boat, you're changing, you're waiting. And then, so you're underway. You know, yeah, like at any, least. Yeah. yeah. Like any other race, it's underway. So, <laughs> you know, right away your mood changes until you get to the water and <laughs> the wind is in your face and the waves and, you know, like she said, we're, we're not the greatest swimmers. So that was a little disheartening. But So we were told the first swim was smooth. Yeah. Look, but make sure you look behind <laughs> Allegedly. you. Allegedly. sun coming up. It's yeah. beautiful. It's glassy. <laughs> we we undersold first... the first swim, Chris. <laughs> when we got in that first swim, I was like, I'm in a washing machine. That was yeah. my first thought. And my second thought was, how are we going to make that second cutoff? Mm-hmm. Because we did not allow this much time for this yeah. swim. And I yeah. saw, I don't think we're the only ones struggling with it. I don't know, but. Oh, no, 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 no. I mean, was... everyone, I mean, there's a couple dolphins off the front, I'm sure. But like yeah. everyone, I, and we had the same thought as like the first couple strokes. I was like, okay, this is pretty, this is pretty serious. It's like, oh, it's going to be like that. It's going to be like this all day. <laughs> like, okay, it's, let's go. Well, turns out it, it, it wasn't like that all day. Yeah, sure. it was just that the was, first. Yeah, it was really I, just I the thought first. It was the, yeah, the first one I thought was the worst by by far. Yeah. So, no, it was it was pretty yeah. gnarly. And also like the water level was really low. So there was like that weird rock bar. Yeah. Um, we were seeing people like jump bad. off. I was like, what is going on up there? I thought that was the exit because I'm sighting and I'm like, oh, thank God they're standing up. They're getting out. And I'm like, you know, you can see the flag, but I'm like, am I just not seeing it? Yeah. <laughs> You know, you get there, like <laughs> we're not getting out yet. So. You're like, no, you got another 400 to go until the that, yeah. that was that was uh, that was wishful thinking. Uh, yeah. To, yeah. you know, it was, it was a dupe, capital sure. W. Um, yeah, so 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 you get through this first swim, it has to feel great. I know if you guys are, are like us, it's like once we do a cut like that first transition, it's like okay, now we're swim running, we know how to do this, we're just gonna do this for 10 to 14 hours, but you know, we know how to do this. Is that, uh, did you, did you start feeling a little bit more centered and, and kind of ready to go once you got through that first swim? Well, I think we felt great to have that swim done, but we had looked really closely at our times and we had taken too long on that first swim. Mm. So oh, we're okay. one swim yeah. in and we are already like clawing our way through to be able to make that eleven fifteen cutoff, which. Yeah. So we knew immediately we got out of the water. It's like, gotta go. I don't. Yeah. I think I had a watch. That day. I don't normally wear a watch, but I think I had yeah. a watch that just. You wore a watch with the time of day on it, and I had I my watch tracking the activity, so we could keep track. Nice. I like the divide and conquer strategy on the timing <laughs> and the transitions. And now, did you have it on local legs. time, or you were still like on a you know central? I don't even remember. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure. No, it's a, it's a garbage. I'm sure. I'm sure. It automatically was. 
<laughs> it's like lobbing the hard hitting questions, yeah. you know, it's yeah. hardcore journalism over here. So, so we you- just knew, uh, you know, as far as the anxiety, that the anxiety switched from all oh, the anxiety of the race underway to the anxiety of the ch- we're behind already. So it was a different mm-hmm. kind of thing. So was it a better I, kind of anxiety or worse? Because it, it's like, oh, I, you almost can't worry about the level of difficulty anymore. Now you're just like, I think it you was have worse. to move forward kind of thing. I think it was worse. For me, I think it was worse. I think we just really did not want to get pulled. Like I knew we could yeah. do I knew we could do it. Yeah. Um, but did we have the time to do it? And I knew we could do it if the swims weren't all like that first swim. Yeah. Yeah. Um, But I felt like we moved really well over the terrain. Like we were steady. Like we didn't try. Neither of us fell once the entire way. Um, Yeah, we said that early on. Like, let's just, okay, don't break any legs. Stay upright. That's like the the battle. Because I don't know if if you guys, we saw more than one person, I think, you know, with like ankle, you know, people helping. It's like, Mm -hmm. (laughs) It's over. So Yeah, I don't yeah. chew you up and spit you out. Yeah, like little baby deer leg stuff, you know. Yeah. That's the last was, thing. I remember there was one point where I tried to go a little faster and Ben stopped me and said that it's not worth it to try and go that fast. Like we need to go at a pace where we aren't gonna fall. Yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, keep it steady, keep moving forward. So um we, now did you did you feel like the race kind of started to un- come to you a little bit and unfold as you were, I, I really, it sounds like you had a very sound plan of like, you know, just put it into gear and, and keep on cruising. I'm sure having those next couple swims not be as uh, intense and, and washing machine esque. Did that yeah. sort of help restore oh, some of that confidence in your, in your plans? It did because like you said, <laughs> like you said, is, you know, is this what it's going to be like all day? Well, it turns out, no, it wasn't. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that helped a lot. And we made the uh, first time cut off with without a problem. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, nice! Than we had wanted, but we made it. Obviously, we made it. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Spoiler alert: They finished everybody. <clears throat> yeah. I, it was awesome. Why, Chris? Why are you spoiling? We'll have to. We'll have to put an <laughs> in alert case in people here. Were, yeah. She's like, beep. <laughs> spoiler alert: No spoilers. Oh. But then we get closer to the second time cut off, which is at eleven fifteen for people who aren't aware of the time cutoffs. Mm-hmm. And we were really very, very close. And we knew, because we'd done the backwards calculations, Mm -hmm. we knew how close we were. And we got into the swim before the second cutoff, and we were behind. And we got out of the swim, and we were behind. Ben, do you want to tell this part? Which part are we at? (laughs) (laughs) You're on your your way to your second cutoff. Yeah. you you're behind when you enter and you're behind when you get out. Yeah. So I have the time on my paddle. Like this is when we have to get in the water or this is when we have to be out of this swim. And it's like, mm-hmm. we weren't even in that swim yet. Mm. So before we even start that swim, we're already, you know, yeah. sort of under pressure. Um, so we just do as good, you know, the best we can. And that, that swim, they also added, you had to go a little farther out, around another buoy i think Mm -hmm. so they it it added a little more than it actually was it was a relatively short swim but you know starting it behind it i think that's the poop swim yeah are you talking about the poop swim that it's no so they added one there i remember but then uh, on this other swim that they just moved the buoy a little bit farther Mm, out there was like a point there or something you're like, we don't need any extra meters or whatever they're measuring in right we don't need any yeah (laughs) it's me (laughs) We so, get out of the water, and we we know we can't make it. Like we know we cannot get there at eleven fifteen. Um, yeah, I but, mean, our what we wrote down was pretty conservative, and so I'm just hoping. I'm thinking. I'm thinking. We just run as fast as we can. It'll be wrong. We'll make it. Whatever. Yeah. And yeah. we ran. I think it might be the hardest I have ever run for however far it is from when you get out of the water and you get to the time cut off. And we are not going to make it. Like, we're going to miss it by one to two minutes. Oof. And we know that, but we're running as, I we don't had, know what we were thinking, but we I was had a like, pretty well. excellent run split. That, that, you, can, you can see I that. I love it. On the nice. Result somewhere. I looked it up. I, I, like, I love oh. that you guys weren't just like, didn't resign yourself. You're like, You're well, like, let's, let's at least give it, give it a gas. shot. Let's yeah. go. I love it. <laughs> yeah, there wasn't a lot of talking, but. There was no talking. There was some throwing up, but we did not. 
Wow. I threw up. I threw up right at the end. Right at the end. After the run, after the sprint. Yeah, Yeah. coming into transition, I was puking. So, but well, you really maxed it out there. They washed my face off for me. It's nice. It's very very nice. It's the Swedish hospitality. Very hospitable. Yes. Yeah. They're like, here's here's some fika. Fill you back up. (laughs) Yeah. You want a hot dog? (laughs) Nah. We know it's eleven seventeen. Like we miss the time cut off, and I'm waiting for somebody to come with like to sweep me off. Yeah. And nobody's we like waiting for someone to take a ship or whatever. And, yeah. and there were two or three other teams with us. Um, yes. And, so one right- to, and we're just like, well, what do we do? Like, so I went up to a volunteer. And he said, <laughs> yeah, we didn't know what to do. <laughs> I'm pretty sure we just missed the time cutoff. And he said, they aren't pulling people up off yet. Get your food and go. And then I was like, Ben, is it cheating if we go? Like, I do not want to be a cheater. <laughs> some foreshadowing. So run guardian some angel. foreshadowing. This is going to come up at a very crucial moment later in the story. Oh. So, <laughs> so, we go to an- so I go to another official, and I'm like, we missed the time cutoff. And they said, they aren't pulling people yet. Get your food and go. And I was like, well, I guess two people are telling us we can go. Yeah, yeah. We didn't argue. We just grabbed something and yeah and my understanding is it's the first couple cutoffs that are the ones that are really tight because they just want to make sure people are moving along but once you get uh deeper into the race there's a little bit more more generous yeah well for most of you there are okay (laughs) we'll get to that too i guess it was tense all day wow okay so you press on we were a little bit relieved leaving there actually we were we were elated we were so happy but nice. we also just gave everything we had for, what was that, a 5K or something? I'll run so, around. you know, we're walking, we're drinking, we're eating, talking, and pretty soon we're, we're right back in it. So yeah. And one, we didn't know that our GPS tracker wasn't working. Um, and so, like, Kim was trying to follow us, Amy and Trista mm-hmm. were tracking us. And we were actually kind of joking. We were like, our friends are probably watching our little dot and thinking, don't they know they need to be going faster? And they <laughs> we were so far we back. Were we were so far back in the field that the spectator boat had to leave before we even got there because they're like, we got to get to the next one or, yeah. you know, or we're mm. going to miss everybody. So, um, so, our, so spectators, all our friends, yeah, nobody saw us. All our friends thought we'd been pulled. But meanwhile, we're still running and swimming our little hearts out. Yeah, yeah you're like persevering. I love it. I love it. Um, you know, the, the, I think this race is really interesting, and I'm curious if you guys experienced it the same way, where at first it seems like it's taking like a really long time, and the next thing you know, it's like, oh, my God, we're like five hours into this thing. We're like six hours in. Did you guys start feeling like you're just, you're just kind just of in like this swim-run flow yeah, state? Yeah, yeah. I think that's yeah. pretty typical of, of all the racing I've done, but mm-hmm. yeah, mm-hmm. yes. And there was a little time in here where I felt like it really did just get fun. Like, there was some time in here we were not worried about the time cutoffs. I was really nauseated all day. But other than that, like, we were swimming, we were running. It was beautiful. The people are great. Yeah, it was beautiful. Yeah. It was really a beautiful day. Yeah. Yeah. Well... Tell us if if that first swim was was a little concerning for you. How how were you feeling about the pig swim? Obviously, that's a pinnacle piece of Atala there, and that's another fourteen hundred meters, I think, uh, on that front. But when you got when you got to the pig swim, how were you how were you feeling, and how did you handle it? I was pretty worried about the coldness. I have a really hard time with cold. Um, so I was pretty worried about that. <laughs> I don't. Have this, I don't have as much trouble with the cold. Yeah, us <laughs> yeah, normally we got the body, body fat body fat is, <laughs> you know, very insulative. Unfortunately, I did do, um, leading up to this, I did do cold baths. Um, oh, I did two to three times a week. I would just do them in my bathtub with um, a bag of ice from Costco and get it to like Smart. fifty-two degrees and stay in it for twenty minutes. And I do think that made a huge difference. That's Um, really smart. So I take that back what I said earlier. We did everything. I did not do those. (laughs) That's not, that's, 
that's the one thing that. Well, we that, have uh, we have the insurance policy, you know. <laughs> yeah, a nice, exactly, nice layer of fat. Exactly, I worked hard on that. <laughs> <laughs> so I think the pig swim was that where you got your calf cramp? Yeah. So I mean, we got there. I don't know how you felt, but after that first, after the very first swim, it was. I mean, I wasn't worried about the swimming after that. I saw, I saw the pig swim. Of course, that's the one everybody talks about, like you said. But I didn't really have any anxiety about that one. I'm like, it's just another swim, and it doesn't look as bad. And if memory serves, it wasn't as wavy. No, it yeah. It was rough. I mean, the sun's out. It's a beautiful day. And mm-hmm. You just swim across. Yeah, so, just don't go to Finland. That was That's the only thing I was thinking about. Yeah, I was well, like, that, stay that on came, course. Right, that came later, right? Yeah. So, um, I did get a, I did get a cramp probably two-thirds of the way through that one mm. um, in my leg, which is normal. I get calf cramps from time to time. So um, we ne- that's one thing we never really worked out before that. I'm like, yeah, we stopped. And and I, I led all the swim, so I was, as soon as I stop, you know, she, she has no choice. She has to stop too. So yeah. I'm like, you have to – you're going to have to stretch my calf out here. So and it was like there's no discussion. She just – just very casually, just like grabs my foot, and <laughs> I don't. Know. That's yeah. what that's what partners months all about here. <laughs> it is. Yeah, you gotta yeah. sometimes you gotta get your partner's calf cramp out. Just grab their yeah. foot and just like you know <laughs> lie down on your pull buoy. It <laughs> you was know, super. It's... It was just super casual though. Really, it was really easy. And people, I I've, I've told that to people before. And they're like, "Well, what do you do?" I'm like, "Well, like I said, I get I get cramps when I swim from time to time, so I'm sort of used to it. It's not pleasant, but." You're in the middle of the ocean. You gotta get. Yeah, you gotta get yeah. Some it wasn't rocks. a foot massage or anything. So no. I mean, yeah. <laughs> Dang. I didn't ask. For it's that. like, can you work on these bunions? Yeah. Yeah. So I know awesome. got got it out. I don't. We weren't there a minute. I mean, it was no. just real quick, and mm-hmm. we were on our way. But from that point it. on, whenever he tried to get out of the water, um, he couldn't really stand up because the cramp would. Mm. It was difficult. <laughs> I had a little more trouble getting out of the water. Yeah, oh. that's when. Yeah, the, the I think after around that time of the race is when the cold, like, kind of starts setting in a little bit more. It feels like on your body, like it's hard to shake the like coldness of when it starts to kind of get in on you. So I, I feel like yeah. that's a pretty, pretty common thing around that yeah. part of the and race. And that whole section of the race is cold because you do the pig swim, you got that run, and then there's a couple more swims and you know we, we got yeah. we got pro tips so like that nine hundred swim before you get to um Kimiendo. Kimiendo, like that one that one is pretty uh pretty cold. Yes. I mean we heard a story of someone who had like a mystical experience on that <laughs> So like, the whole seriously. day was pretty mystical but yeah for <laughs> that's, sure no, man. that's for true. sure. You know Ain't for, that for us a, th- a thing with us is you know, yeah, the, the swims are, are cold, colder, uh, but the cumulative effect. But a lot of those runs in between are, are really technical. So, you know, we're not hammering through these technical runs. We're yeah. you know, we're t- still taking it easy. You know, there's for us just nothing really to be gained by flying over rocks and roots. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So we're also you're also not building up any heat from you know mm-hmm. from that from that running. So, you know, when you say the cumulative. <laughs> cold yeah it, it does start to add up so yeah for sure for sure and then obviously the next big next big milestone there is is orna the <laughs> casual 12 miler three quarters of the way into the race no big deal saying that i think i did finally warm up actually <laughs> <laughs> there's plenty of opportunities to warm up there yeah i think we're kind of excited to have a break from our week length which is swimming okay yeah. Um, I, yeah, I was. I was happy we, to be on the run. We calculated how fast each kilometer had to be because there's another time cut off at the end of morning. That's right. That's right. Yeah. And we thought we were fine. Um, well, we were fine, but we, I was ended pretty, up, we were a lot closer than we thought. We would. Yeah, I was really nauseated and kind of struggling. Right. But we were, we were doing all right, and... We went a little slower, I think, because I was so nauseated. And then we didn't realize, I'm sure we've been told, but we didn't remember that the very last part of Orno is no longer on a road. It's Yeah. yeah. So we got to that and 
that was a little petrifying yeah. because we knew we yeah. were very close, but we, you know, each look, sort of looked through the forest. We, I don't see any ocean anywhere. So, and yeah. That, yeah, it's really not that far. But when you're, you're talking about, we got to be there in like two minutes. So, so we get um, we get out of the trail. You know, there's those cliffs at the end, or cliff isn't the right word. You get out of the woods and you're almost to the water. And there was a volunteer standing at the top saying. You're going to make it, but you've got to run fast down to the water. <laughs> <laughs> you got to make it, but you got to hurry too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I believe we made that by less than a minute. Whew, amazing. Yeah, yeah. And we didn't know it was that close. We actually got down to the water, and the person there said, "You're safe, but I need you to step over the timing mat right now." <laughs> wow. Because they were not oh. going to let us keep going at that one. Like, they were ready to, yeah. like, the boat was sitting dark, there yeah. waiting for us. Like, you're going to get in the boat if you don't make it. Yeah, so. yeah. And, you know, what we've heard from interviewing, like, uh, a Tula people is, like, one of the reasons they do that cutoff is, like, once it starts getting dark, then it starts getting really cold. So it's it's, yeah. a, it's a real safety thing. It isn't just, right. like, a, you know, we, we want this race to end at some time. It's it's mostly <clears> because, I mean, if they, they'd let you go if, if there was enough daylight, for sure. Right. I'm sure they would. So we were quite thrilled to have made that you know yeah, we went yeah. into it thinking we had plenty of time and then at just, it was towards the end you know i don't know 3k to go maybe something like that uh, you know people the aid station people were telling us oh he said you'll make it you'll make it just keep going I'm like, they're lying they're just lying <laughs> you know? so, they're lying to you <laughs> and they didn't know either but you know they just thank god they're Thank God we're like, oh, well, maybe we can really actually make this. So so I think when we made that one, I think everything lightened up a little bit. Yeah. I feel like we actually started to look around a little bit and, like, relax a little bit. Nice. All the briefings. You know, everybody that gives you kind of the race briefing, they're like, okay, after that one, it's it's all over. It's just you're in and out, you're in and out, you're in and out. That's not totally true either. No, (laughs) absolutely. And they also say, well, that's not totally true. And it's not totally true, but – you know, we, we knew we were very, com- I mean, I was very confident that from that point we were going to make it. So. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So we're yeah, doing so- the little, oh, go ahead. No, go ahead. Go ahead, Anna. So we're doing the little, it seems like you're just constantly getting in and out of the water with yeah. our amazing yep. transitions. <laughs> and, um, I'm sure they were nice and crisp there at the end. <laughs> yeah. Well, the end where it wasn't quite as hard as the out for me. Yeah. So. Getting out was not so <clears throat> smooth. Um, but meanwhile, my wife was on the spectator boat and we hadn't seen her all day. Oh. Um, and I really wanted to. So we get. <laughs> I did too. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> we get to the final little, very, very short swim. And we kind of come up over over the rocks towards the water. And I hear Kim yell my name. And she had somehow gotten her hands on a bike at the finish line. And nice. rode it all the way back. Ridden the bike wow. down. Um, and I was just so happy to finally see her. Because there are all these points where I thought we'd see her. And we never did because we were too far So it was always her. like this little letdown. Like anticipation, <laughs> letdown. Hold the flame. Like, yeah. It was. Yeah. It really was. And then she was oh. finally there. Which was such a boost to finally see her after a For sure. day. Um, and she did say our transition looked amazing. By the way. <laughs> well, I'm sure she photographed it. She got it, it on film too, probably. She did. she did. Yeah. Nice. So, so, so you, so you make it, you make it to Uta and this is where I need to interject myself in the story because <laughs> out we, we, I don't know where you were chipper, but I had, I went back to the room and I come up and I see these two people, the Calamanders, who are running up the hill, but they're running up the, the wrong, wrong the wrong road. So they, had, so you guys are coming to the finish line. You you took a left. Amateurs. Too early. Too early. You Premature took a, left. Left. I see you guys, and I was like, "Hey, what are you guys doing?" It's like, "Oh, we're trying to." Where's the finish? We're like, "Dude, it's over right. here." So I was telling you guys to take this path to get back <laughs> on the main the main section. We were and he's so like, confused. "Oh, is that Ben? It was you." Is like, "Is that no? That's cheating." I was like, "Dude, no one cares, man. You already ran up half the hill. Just cross <laughs> out over and finish. Let's get this over with." And then you guys had a moment, like and you're seconds. like, "And you're like, Ben, Ben, you're like, we can't do that." And Anna, to your credit, you're like, "All right, guess we're going back down." <laughs> so you guys ran down the hill. 
turned around, came back up. I just stayed there waiting for you to clap when you guys walked by because I knew you were coming at that point. And uh, yeah, Heartbreak Hill making it to the finish line. It sounds like it was just an incredibly emotional, stressful day on a variety of levels. What was it like to to see the finish line and, and, and cross it? Well, first... <laughs> I think it was kind of altered by the, the only thing I remembered from the course is you see the tennis courts, you turn left. <laughs> you don't turn left yeah. before the tennis courts though. So right. we like ran like, you know, Why hill. would we have turned? There was no sign telling us to turn. We turned though. I don't know why. <laughs> it it's a long day. You're not, your faculties aren't <laughs> yeah, as sharp as like, they. There's the yeah. hill. Let's get up the hill and let's get a beer. And I we sit ran out. all the way up. And yeah, well, you we were so close to the finish line. Like I could see Marcus with his phone up, ready to record. I saw Kim with her camera, ready yeah. to photograph. They're all looking the other way. And we're just like, <laughs> yeah. like nobody saw us. We're like, like sneak attack, everybody. <laughs> Got it. And we're just I felt like good that they didn't see us. Nobody saw us. So we just like sort of slow. The secret's out now. I got to tell you. Like, Let's just turn around before anybody sees us. So, so we just kind of slinked down the hill. Trying to have nobody see us, Chris. You're the only person I know of who saw us. Yeah. Was I, was tra- I was trying to help you guys, and I, honestly, I, I don't think uh, you know. I'll fall on the sword if Attila says that that would been that would have constituted cheating or something. But yeah, we're cutting we just the cord. Did this whole race, we cannot cut it at the end. We yeah. ran up that hill, and Kavita yeah, was waiting wow. for us, and I was so happy to see him. He ran up yes. the last part of the hill. With I think he was happier to see us than we were to be there. So. <laughs> I don't know what that meant. But. <laughs> I think everybody thought we'd been pulled. I guess, yeah, I guess that's what, yeah. Because we would mention this to people. Well, I don't know if we're going to make it. And they're like, you'll make it, you'll make it. Like, some people are like, "There's cu- we're talking about cutoffs. And some people are like, oh, there's cutoffs? What? They're like, yes. Yes, there are. There are cutoffs for people who can't swim. So, yeah. So it was, yeah. It it was was, a great relief. And I I feel like the energy at the finish line, especially you all coming in, everyone just comes out and and rallies around who's ever around. The the lights are there. It's dark. Everyone's bundled up. Um, But Uh, did that like pull you pull you up the hill and and pull you through a little bit quicker? Like talk us through a little bit of, of that finish line shoot there it was amazing and completely (laughs) unexpected like we knew we were last but i didn't know that the last people to finish get like an extra welcome and a bottle of champagne no (laughs) i didn't either people should think about that so so side note we're only dead last because we took that wrong turn because (laughs) <laughs> there were a couple of guys that we passed on the way in and I think we were feeling a little bit better. And so we're like, well, let's just, we're feeling good. Let's just go. We felt good. And on I'm that like, then we won't be dead last. Right. You know, somebody pick will be off a couple us. people. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, you know, we took that wrong turn and, and you know, cost us a few minutes. <laughs> <laughs> and so it ended up, we got cheered in and got the little party at the end, which was just fantastic. So, and I think yeah. a wow. lot of our, friends thought we'd been pulled too which made the finish even more like people were so emotional to see us finish and i was like why is everybody so emotional it's because (laughs) they thought we'd been pulled yeah right yeah exactly yeah the trackers weren't working so they didn't know where you were because they they pulled it off yeah like where's ben and anna they're like oh they're not they're done so and then we appeared (laughs) what what a great experience um how soon afterwards were you guys kind of like in the right headspace to reflect on the adventure and, and the day. I don't know. It took a while. Yeah. It took a long I mean, while. Yeah. I mean, I was, I was home. Yeah. <laughs> mm. I mean, I yeah, it was, a, it was a big, it was a big event for me. So. That's a big event for anybody. Yeah. <laughs> yeah well, I hope so. <laughs> It was, and uh, uh, yeah, so so I guess like if uh, there's a bunch of people listening to this, I'm sure who are going to be racing it for the first time. Any any words of wisdom that you'd share from your experience? So, I'm I'm kind of a private person, and I had to think a little bit about doing the podcast because I don't really want attention or um, to be to be seen or heard by people. But um, 
I think it's important that the people who aren't young and aren't these super strong <laughs> athletes are a little visible because yeah, you can yeah. you can do really hard things even if you're older and not the strongest swimmer and probably not the fastest runner either. Um, so I guess it was Im- important to me that people know that more average athletes, you can do this. Yeah. I love that. I love it. Well, thank you so we much for coming on and very you know, average, sharing your story. Very average. <laughs> yes. And thank you for, thanks for inviting us. Yeah. Thank you for having us. Yeah, you still haven't given us any words of wisdom, though. Oh, I actually <laughs> think it's really. It's, or, or wisdom was anybody. Uh, yeah. You know, get, don't uh, count yourself out. Listen, yeah, oh, for sure, yeah. for sure, yes. Get you a know, coach. Get a coach and get a good partner, yeah. and do what they both say. And then do it week by week. Don't look at the big picture too often. Yep, that's a good. Some good tips there. So I, I tell myself that one all the time. P- put the outcome goals out there. And when we had uh, Dr. Justin Ross, he was talking about this as well. Focus on the process goals, what you can control day in, day out, and then just stack, stack those good days, and then get to the outcome. And it is what it is. Yep. Awesome. Well, man, Ben and Anna, what a what an amazing experience you had, uh, and clearly a really amazing partnership. I think highlights. A lot of the things that a lot of people love about Swim Run and and what we try to highlight in Partners Month here. So thank you again for coming on and sharing your story. Um, and we know we see you at a bunch of the U.S. Attila or formerly Odyssey, currently now Attila races, um, and hope to see you at a lot more in the future. Yeah, you bet. Thank you. Thank you for having us. That's it for this week's episode. Thanks so much for listening to the show. Make sure to subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts and leave a wet rating or review since that's the best way to help other people discover the show and the sport of swim run. Check out our website, lowtideboys.com. That's boys with a Z for swim run resources, including gear guides, tips, how-to videos, and so much more. Make sure to check out our meme page at the Low Tide Boys on Instagram. If you have any questions or suggestions for the show, Send us a DM or email us at lowtideboys at gmail.com. We'd like to thank Writing Easy Records for our show music and, of course, our wives for their support and tolerance of our swim run and other activities. Lots of activities. Lots of activities. (laughs) Finally, you can support our efforts on Patreon. Until next time, get out there and go for a swim. Then a run. And then a swim. Then another run. Then another swim. Then run some more. Just keep going. Let's go. And then stop at some point because, you know. And fuel. Don't forget to fuel. Got to fuel too. Of course, yes. (laughs) 